Hello, my name is Rick Pearson, and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, Scripture says to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Join us today as we divide the word of truth from this amazing book we call the Holy Bible. Welcome back, folks. I have with me today uh, my beautiful wife, Karen. She's my helpmate, my soulmate, and my very best friend. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you so much for inviting me, Rick. And I'd like to thank all of you viewers for joining us, too. And I'd like to invite you to our Thursday night Bible study podcast every Thursday night at 7 p.m. We love hearing from you, and we love taking your questions on live chat. Yes, we have live chat. And you know, uh, we'd also like to thank our partners, uh, who are supporting us in prayer, but also financially helping us with this TV broadcast. We thank you so much, and, and uh, we, without you, we couldn't make this possible. It's true. Your encouragement has spiritually and financially blessed us so much. We greatly appreciate you. We love hearing from you, so please make sure you send us your questions. That's right, and you know, um, in the Bible... It says that uh, James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given unto him. That word abradeth means that God does not revile you or scold you. He wants you to ask him questions. He wants to communicate. Jesus even said in Matthew 7.7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You know, when I received this revelation of America's role in Bible prophecy 36 years ago, I searched, and I studied, and I asked God time and time again to help me understand what He was saying to me. And you have to remember something, that half the descriptions of Babylon the Great pointing to America were not fulfilled when I received this revelation. That's true. It's taken 35 years. And before we published our book in 2021, we hired a professional publicist who had published over five word-by-word -word study commentaries on the book of Revelation. And he was a former employee of Thomas Nelson Publishing, and he told us that when he got done examining the scriptures that we presented, he was convinced that America is not only in scripture, but she, that she plays a vital role in Bible prophecy. So now it's important to realize this man was not a novice. He was a seasoned researcher in theology, and after all these years, he discovers America in the Bible. So if, if he had to study and ask questions, perhaps that gives you encouragement to also ask questions. And we must remember something, that Daniel said the prophetic word would be sealed until the last days. That's in Daniel 10, 14. So one interviewer asked me, why do you think that it has taken so long to discover America's role in Bible prophecy? And I answered that question with Scripture. Habakkuk 2.2 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and it shall not lie. You know, when 53 biblical descriptions of Babylon the Great are already fulfilled right in the front of our eyes, and you can read the verses in the Bible, 
and then watch the news at the same time, and they speak in perfect unison. God makes it just that simple for our generation. And more prophecies are being fulfilled on a monthly and a weekly basis as we rush towards the final days. You know, folks, this book does not lie. The visions in this book do not lie. The prophecies in this book do not lie. The only thing that lies in Scripture are the traditional interpretations that have no anointing from God. They do not speak from the heart of God, but from the traditional hand-me-downs from prophecy that, that can sometimes be confusing, but things that are hidden in Scripture and we don't understand, so we speculate. However, Babylon the Great has definitely come out of the closet. And yet the vast majority of prophecy teachers and TV, uh, some TV networks, seminaries, Bible colleges, uh, they won't even open their hearts to listen to what we've discovered in this book. Even Jesus struggled with this type of religious spirit who refused the revelation that he was the son of the living God. Mark 7, 13 says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things like ye do. Their traditions were holding them back from receiving revelation knowledge. So Karen, on that note, let's hear from one of our viewers and see what wisdom we can find in Scripture to answer their questions. Very good, Rick. Thank you. We had a question from Peter after lesson eight of your study, The Hour That Changes Everything. Peter said, you stated, Rick, that there were certain sins that a believer must overcome to be considered worthy to be the bride of Christ at the rapture. Are you saying that not all born-again believers who are alive when the rapture happens will be taken up to meet the Lord in the air? That, that's a very good question. A very good question. Um, and he continued on, Rick. He said, I find no scripture which says that some sins are rapture disqualifiers and other sins are not serious enough to cause a born-again believer who's living when the rapture occurs to be left behind. Am I misunderstanding what you're teaching? My Sunday school class is presenting your study guide, and so far we're in agreement with your teaching until now. Could you please give us some feedback? Okay, um, that's a question that a lot of Christians are asking. A lot of Christians. Um, thank you, Pete, uh, for the first part of the questions concerning the worthiness of the rapture. There are seven churches in the book of Revelation, Revelation 2 and 3, and Jesus rebukes five out of the seven for not serving him in certain areas of their life. And you can see those on the screen. Ephesus lost their first love, Sardis, Smyrna, uh, Pergamos. All of these different churches had different problems. And he was talking to believers today. Why is Jesus warning us of sin and yet still calling us his church? He says to the Philadelphia believers, because you have kept my word, I will keep you from the hour of trial that shall come upon the whole world. He doesn't say that to any other churches except for maybe Smyrna, who is uh, a persecuted church. But he says he's going to give this group an open door. Now, Philadelphia and Smyrna only represent 30% of the body of Christ. In Matthew 25, Jesus explains that 50% or only half the virgins waiting for the bridegroom were ready and the other half were not. You can find that in Matthew 25, 10. And they don't go through the open door that Jesus promised the church of Philadelphia. Right. They're left behind. Now note, they're still virgins. They were called the bride but they were not filled with oil. They were not ready. They were not serving God. They were not walking in the obedience to God's word. And in Matthew 25, uh, 13, Jesus says, Watch therefore, and ye know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. In Luke 21, 36, he says, Watch therefore and pray always that ye may be counted worthy to escape. All these things that shall come to pass 
and to stand before the Son of God. Now, born-again Christians who are actively participating in the sins of those churches, which includes adultery, lying, fornication, etc., and not walking under the golden rule of doing unto others as you would have them do unto to you, those people have spots and wrinkles in them that may discount them from the rapture. Ephesians 5.27 talks about Christ's relationship to the bride, and he said, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself, that, it might sanct that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So the Philadelphia believers, they were walking according to the word. They were doing unto others as they'd have them do unto you. And because of the condition of their heart, God determined that he would give them an open door. That's in Revelation 3, 9 through 11. So the keeping or obeying of God's word is a condition of the heart that only God can discern not us. So on a daily basis, you wake up in the morning and you say, Lord, what is it that you'd have me do today? If you have ought against anyone, go and, and fix that, confess it, and get your house ready. Because when this thing comes, it will be over in one hour. The rapture of the church will be a twinkling of an eye. But if you're dealing in any of those sins in Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus specifically said half the virgins would not be ready. This is very serious, folks. And we're going to be right back with more questions right after this. Hello, folks. Karen and I would like to personally thank you, our prayer partners. And our monthly supporters who are helping us spread God's word concerning America's role in Bible prophecy. In order to help you reach friends and other loved ones with this teaching, please listen to this very special message. In these end times, it is more important than ever to reach the lost. That's why Rick and Karen Pearson have assembled all of their teaching into this powerful study kit. For a gift of just $200 plus shipping and handling, Prophecy USA will send you a free study kit of five books, five study guides, and a DVD teaching aid discussing each chapter. Or for a gift of just $375 plus shipping and handling, you will receive a free study kit of 10 books, 10 study guides, and two DVD teaching aids. Call today at 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org to send your gift and begin sharing these important prophetic teachings. Welcome back, folks. We just, we just took a question about uh, Pete asked us a question about Christians before the rapture. Who will go up and who won't? We can't determine that. But then he asked a second question about Christians in the tribulation. Now, Karen, what, what does he ask on that second question? Well, the second part of the question dealt with for those who are left behind, believers that will actually go into the tribulation. He wants to know how you can say that that some believers will go through the tribulation. Okay, I can't say who and who isn't. We, we are working our salvation out with fear and trembling right now, <laughs> delivering this word uh, on national television. But people who teach that there is no pre-tribulation rapture and people that teach there is a pre-tribulation rapture, in some cases, both of them are right. There are six verses in the Bible describing believers being tested and martyred for their faith in the seven-year tribulation period. And according to Scripture, if you don't pass the test on this side of the rapture, remember those seven churches, you're not found worthy by God, and you'll have to pass the test on the other side of the rapture. Now, this is, I'm, I'm using Scripture. Mm -hmm. That test will cost you your life on the other side of the rapture. It'll cost you martyrdom. 
you also must refuse the mark of the beast, according to Revelation 13, 16, which will allow you to buy or sell. Now, the six verses that we look at describing believers in the tribulation are listed up on your screen. There's Revelation 6, 9, 11, 12, 11, 13, 8, 14, 9 through 13, and 20, uh, verse 4. And it should be noted that eternal salvation is a gift of grace from God through the work of the cross, not through our works. It says, uh, Ephesians 2, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. However, as we understand Scripture, the rapture is a reward from God for obeying Him with all your heart, soul, and body, and is based on your efforts to follow His Word. And this understanding should encourage all believers daily to pick up your cross, walk circumspectfully with love, kindness, forgiveness, overcoming lusts of the flesh, and humbly being obedient to his still small voice. You know, Paul prayed this, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Luke 9 says, if any man will come after me, this is Jesus, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Now following Christ is not a drudgery in religious dogma. It's on the contrary. Jesus promised, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10 says that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but yet Jesus comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And then, and then 3 John 1 says that he wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So walking with Jesus and fulfilling his commandments and doing unto others as you would have them do unto you that's a thing that brings joy in your life. It's not a drudgery. But if you're involved in all of those, in any of those sins that are listed, Jesus listed them. They're all in Scripture. It's all black and white, folks. You've got to walk clean before God and do unto others. And the condition of your heart is between you and Him. You know, we have some very interesting questions concerning America that you're going to want to hear. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back. History records that the greatest exodus in the Bible was led by Moses. But according to scripture, another exodus is coming. It's bigger, better, and is beyond any other mystery that is contained in scripture. But how does the United States of America play a pivotal role in this unfolding mystery? Prophecy USA is proud to present the latest book by Rick Pearson, The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. This exciting and timely new book is coming soon. And now, when you send a gift of $35 or more, plus shipping and handling, you will receive the book, The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future, as soon as it's available. Call today, 1-888-306-1759, or visit prophecyusa.org to be one of the first this October to unravel one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture. 4,000 years ago, an antichrist religion was birthed in ancient Babylon. Yet Joshua overcame it, Gideon overturned it, Elijah overwhelmed it, and Josiah overthrew it. This vile religion demands a rejection of God's commandments, a defiance of God's morals, a resurgence of Ashtoreth poles with rampant immorality, and the shedding of innocent blood that cries out for judgment. These are the signs of a nation seduced by Baal worship. But what is the answer? 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide 
addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759, or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. Welcome back, folks. Karen and I are answering questions today from our TV viewing audience and from our Bible study podcast we have every Thursday. Karen, what do we have for our next question? We have a question from a viewer who watched the episode seven, The Tribulation Plagues, and said, you say there will be a nuclear attack against the U.S. How? How could that succeed? America has subs that can deploy nuclear warheads. The ballistic missile submarine is the most reliable means of nuclear deterrence. These vessels would survive a first strike and retaliate, which is meant to prevent an enemy from ever using its weapons against the U.S. That's a very good question. It's a question based on logic. Babylon says in her heart, I sit as queen and shall see no sorrow. So in some ways you're fulfilling prophecy, but remember, this is the book that said it. It's not Rick. Right. If we are Babylon, Babylon is going to fall in one hour. Now, did you happen to see the 9-11 attack on the World Trade Center? How could two airplanes level two skyscrapers in New York City? Well, they did. But what have we learned from it? Did anyone see that coming? Yet it totally paralleled, or paralleled the warnings Isaiah gave the nation in Isaiah 9-11. You know, this was an exact warning sign to God that he gave to Israel when Assyria attacked Israel in 732 B.C. They read that script, and this verse was fulfilled once again when after both attacks, not only in Israel, 732, but also the U.S. Congress read it when they in Congress the day after, and they said the bricks are falling down, but we will we will build with hewn stone. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Mm. Little did Israel know that after missing the warning sign from God, Assyria came back and annihilated the nation eleven years later, because Israel continued in Baal worship and breaking covenant with God. So what have we learned from history? Did America come back to God since 9-11? Are we letting God back into the nation, into the schools, into the courtroom, into Congress? Are we wanting to ban his name, his Bible, and his moral Judeo-Christian protocol from our society? There's a vast majority of people that want to do that. So the coming attack on Babylon the Great is prophesied by Isaiah 47, 10, And thou hast said in thine heart, I, I, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises. Mm -hmm. Folks, this will come as a preemptive strike. And we won't see it coming according to what the prophet Isaiah said. Yes. It will take one hour, according to eight verses, within the prophetic writings of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and even John. How could a little COVID-19 bug shut the whole world economy down? Does that sound impossible? How can a dead person rise from the dead? Impossible, but Jesus did it, didn't he? And so did the saints during the first resurrection. You know, the Bible says that God watches over his word to perform it. Whether we interpret the word correctly or not, it does not matter to him. In, in uh, 539 B.C., the handwriting on the wall was being written in historical Babylon while Persia's military diverted the waters of the Euphrates River and entered under the city gates through that river. Daniel 5.5 5 records that. In that same hour came forth the finger of a man's hand and wrote, Thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. That night, 
was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius the Mede took the kingdom. Currently, America has fulfilled 53 descriptions from God's handwriting in this book. In your questioning, you have fulfilled five of those descriptions. And we've put them down on the screen. She is the greatest military force in the world. Babylon uses her military to police the rule, world or rule over it, over the seven mountains of the earth. She has wisdom and knowledge above other nations. She's proud, haughty, and says in her heart, I am and none else beside me. She literally says, I sit a queen and shall see no sorrow. So according to scripture, this so-called indestructible nation called Babylon the Great is not so indestructible, folks. Would you believe that a U.S. president acting as commander-in-chief would authorize abandoning innocent people and handing our enemies $85 billion of military equipment? while they chant death to America and martyr Christians in the name of God? This has already happened, folks. Would you believe that thousands of people would protest across the USA demanding the right to sacrifice their unborn children to Baal? Well, that has and is happening right now, right under our noses. So, folks, the enemies of America aren't coming. They're already here. God will have His way with America. He has spoken it. He will also do it. He has purposed it, and he will bring it to pass. Now, if America is not Babylon, this is not going to happen. But when it does happen, millions of people will scream in terror and say, how could this ever happen in America? But the fact of the matter is this. Jesus has already warned us seven times in Scripture and that question is not whether God is speaking. The question is who is listening. Look at all the scriptures that are giving us on the screen. For him that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Folks, we don't, we don't enjoy delivering a word this heavy to the nation. But it's all in this book. It's all in this book. So, Karen, that, that's the answer to our questions today. And unfortunately, folks, we're out of time. We'd like to thank you for listening. Don't forget to join our Bible study podcast every Thursday night at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. EST. So this is Rick and Karen Pearson from Prophecy USA. And we're reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. Shalom. Thank you.